This video is part three of five in our series on how to traverse, add to and remove from data structures. In this video, we look at stacks and queues. So this video covers how to traverse, add items to and remove items from stacks and queue data structures. We've introduced the concept of both of these in a previous video. If you've not yet seen it, go back and watch that first. So we've already covered various ways that we can create or implement both of the data structures, stacks or queues. In addition, you have to be able to trace and write code that can traverse them, add to them and remove from them. And you can achieve this by using either an array and procedural programming or an object orientated approach. The exam board recommends you gain a general understanding of these methods backed up by practical experience implementing them, as opposed to trying to memorize any particular given code pattern. Let's start by looking at how to add an item to a stack and then a queue. So let's add Justin to this stack. Remember, adding an item to a stack is performed with a push operation. We push the new item onto the top of the stack. First, check if the stack is already full. It's important that you check a data structure is not full before you attempt to add to an item to it. If it is, you should stop and report an error. It's a step students often forget and it's an easy mark you can gain the exam. We can see there is space available in the stack. We're using an array to implement our stack, which is a static data structure, so it has a limited number of spaces to store items. Next, we need to increment the stack pointer so it points to the next available space in our array. Finally, we insert our new item just in into the array at the position pointed to by the stack pointer. But I thought the stack pointer was supposed to point to the next available space, not the top item in the list. Well, maybe that's what you've been taught by your teacher or you've read in a textbook. And it's also true. It is not that one way is right and the other is wrong. It simply comes down to how you choose to implement the data structure. If you choose to implement it this way, your algorithm for pushing a new item onto the stack will simply swap steps two and three as shown here. Of course, you could choose to implement your stack using objects instead of an array. This way we can get around the restrictions of a static array. Using an object orientated approach, a stack can grow and shrink dynamically to almost any size, assuming we have enough memory. The algorithm doesn't change very much either, as you can see here. OK, so let's add just into this queue. Remember, adding an item to a queue is performed with an NQ operation. We add the new item at the back of the queue. As with a stack, we should begin by checking that the queue is not already full. If it is, we should stop and report an error. We now have to increment the back or tail pointer so it points to the next available space in our array. Remember it's the back or tail pointer we have to move at this stage as new items are always enqueued at the back of a queue. No queue jumping here. Finally, we insert the new data item just in into the location pointed to by our back or tail pointer. Just like with a stack, you could choose to implement a queue so that the back or tail pointer is pointing to the next available space. In this case, you'd enqueue the new item at the position pointed to and then increment the pointer. Again, we could also choose to implement our queue using an object orientated approach. Using an object orientated approach, our queue can grow and shrink dynamically to almost any size, assuming we have free memory. Once again, the algorithm only changes slightly, as shown here. OK, so let's now try removing an item from a stack and then a queue. So let's remove an item from the top of this stack. Remember, removing items from a stack is performed with a pop operation. We pop the last item added from the top of the stack. First, check if the stack is empty. It's important you check a data structure is not empty before you attempt to remove an item. If it is, you should stop and report an error. As we said before, this first step is often one forgotten by students in the exam, and it's an easy mark you can gain. The stack isn't empty, so we can move on to the next step. 
Next, we copy the item pointed to by the pointer out of the stack. Where we store the item is totally up to us. We could make um, some use of this and store it in another variable for later use in a data structure, for example. Finally, we decrement the pointer so it points to the new top of the stack. Note how the actual item SAM still actually exists in our array at position index 2. Data is never really deleted from a computer, it's only overwritten. However, as far as our stack's concerned, SAM has been removed, as the top of the stack is now pointing to Andy. If we choose to implement our stack using an object-orientated technique, the algorithm changes slightly, but overall the steps are the same. So let's remove an item from the front of our queue. Remember, removing an item from a queue is performed by using a dequeue operation, and we dequeue the item at the front of the queue. As with a stack, we should first check that the queue is not empty. If it is, we should stop and report an error. We copy the item we're pointed to by the front or head pointer out of the queue. Again, where we store the item we're copying out is totally up to us. It would make sense to store it in another variable or data structure for further use. Finally, we increment the front or head pointer so it points back to the front of the queue. Note how the item previously at the front of the queue, Craig, still exists in our array at position zero. Remembering at all times, data is never really deleted from a computer, only overwritten. However, as far as our queue is concerned, Craig has been removed as the front of the queue now points to Andy. If we choose to implement a queue using an object oriented technique, the algorithm changes slightly, but overall the steps are exactly the same. Finally, let's look at how to traverse through a stack and then a queue, outputting the contents as we go. Well, in a classic implementation of a stack or queue, we only support three operations, push or enqueue, pop or dequeue, and peek. There are no operations that will expose elements in the middle of those data structures. So we could either use peek to look at the top or front item to see what it is about altering it, or we could repeatedly pop or dequeue items following the same process we showed you before to output the contents as we move through the data structure. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. How do stacks and queues work? How do you create stacks and queues? How do you add a data item to stacks and queues? How do you remove a data item from stacks and queues? And how do you traverse a stack and a queue? We know that getting to grips with data structures and all the algorithms associated with them is a very tricky area of the course. And so we've produced a book called Essential Algorithms for A-Level Computer Science that's available on Amazon. It covers all the data structures you need to know about, along with the algorithms you need to perform on them, and it covers all the exam boards. We overview each data structure, discussing its typical applications and the operations you can perform on it. We provide a QR code that jumps off to a useful page of additional resources. We then take each data structure and the algorithms you need to perform and present them first in simple structured English, then in a diagrammatic format, then in pseudocode, and finally, we present you with fully coded algorithms which you need to cover on the data structures in both Python and VB, so you can actually code them up and practice them yourselves. If you've got an extra 20 seconds, we're just going to go slightly beyond the spec and return to something we mentioned earlier in the video. So earlier we mentioned you can't iterate through a stack or queue looking at all of its contents. And this is because a stack and queue only allow you to push or enqueue, pop or dequeue, and peek. But what's to actually stop you implementing, coding, the ability to iterate through the contents of those data structures? Well, the answer is nothing. If you add this functionality, are they still strictly stacks and queues anymore? Well, yes. 
abstract data structure definitions only define what operations the data structure must support. They do not forbid a programmer from adding additional operations or functionality to a data structure. Now, you're never going to be expected to do this at A level, but it's well worth understanding here the difference between implementation and abstraction.